this is a typical size of panel. It's 180 watt, usually three foot by five foot. These panels, the very best of them will be running somewhere at 16%. Sun power has the highest efficiency of any uh, commercially available power, at like 18 to 20% right now. This is a plate glass panel, so you want to see black cells. The darker they are, the darker the cell, the more light that they actually absorb and turn into electrons. The average cost for an average California home with four people and air conditioning is $24,000. Uh, that's with the rebates. Installed, with permitting, all the costs. It's a 3.2 kilowatt system in our California climate with about four and a half hours average. That works out to be about 18 or 19 kilowatt hours per day, which is what the California average for a family of four with air conditioning uses. If you have a small family with just two people and no air conditioning, you won't need a system that costs $24,000. So you can get away with the system that might be half of that. It will pay for itself in uh, maybe 11 years, maybe seven years. It depends on how steep the price increase of electricity from the utility gets. Price increases have been in the double digits for the last couple of years and they're predicted to remain. As long as we get our energy from fossil fuels, natural gas, you can expect it to get higher rather than lower. The best direction in the northern hemisphere is to face due south, which is not magnetic south, but due south. You have to make a declination correction depending upon where you are at to face due south. And then the angle we found is a latitude minus nine. For inland California, that works out really well. So we're about 39 degrees north of the equator here in Hopland. And so a 30 degree angle works out the very best optimally for spring, all through summer, into fall. We do not optimize for winter time. Things aren't going to change much in the next 10 years. Uh, not, not with the electronics. Uh, the panels, we're hoping that the price will come down. Purified silica has gone up. The silica market is controlled by a cartel. Uh, it's used in computers. The photovoltaics are very similar to, uh, there they are, semiconductors. Instead of putting energy into them, the sun hits them and they make electricity. These are the the SIGs, SIGs panels, uh, copper, indium, gallium, selenium. This type of technology, flexible, thin, will probably play a very large role in the future because the initial cost can come way, way down compared to silica. This is a 10-watt panel. One thing you may notice about it is it's actually kind of big for a 10-watt panel. That's because they're only about 8% efficient. Selenium has a ability to work as a photovoltaic material is limited compared to silica. It's not as good. However, the cost, <laughs> the cost of selenium is a fraction of that of purified silica. This is expensive. This is $229 uh, for 10 watts. <laughs> you can charge a laptop. It'd take a while. It'd take four hours in the sun to run one hour on the computer, for example, on the laptop or iPod, you can probably run right away. Cell phones, anything like that, anything that's got a cigarette lighter that you plug into. These can be extruded, they can be sprayed on in the future. A bunch of companies you might be hearing about them, like Nano Solar. We have not seen their product yet, but they're talking about a price that's one-tenth the cost. Delivered cost should be like one-tenth of the photovoltaic. Uh, silica based. So yeah, we're very excited about that, but we need to see specifications, warranty, we need to see some track record. If you're talking about a $24,000 investment, you have to know that the technology you're investing in has some track record. You don't want to be the first one to find out that technology is not ready for prime time. Right now, these actually cost three times more and has a uh, one-eighth the warranty. Flexibility, though, is there and lightweight.